I am making this video as a request to please finally do something about this broken meta in Stick War 3. I'm going to be showing you this game that I played and explaining what I wanted to do. An update arrived where they made Order Miners a heavy unit, so I wanted to experiment by bringing both Order and Chaos Miners into a game and just seeing how effective they would be together against Eco Sniping. And I can tell you right now that it was not good. I'm going to show you this and do another analysis of this broken, broken stuff and a last ditch effort to please have something done about this because it is not, it's not fun. It really isn't. But anyway, let me, let me take you into this. Okay, so I'm gonna pause right off the bat. Take a look at our decks. On paper, who do you think would win this match? On paper, Swords and Archers versus Spiritans, Toxic Deaths, Eclipsers, and Shadow Wrath. You would think that I would have the advantage here because I have higher tier units. They're more expensive, sure, but on paper, they're meant to be stronger than Swords and Archers. That's the main problem with this. At the current moment, Stick War 3 is not about using units to your strategic advantage. It is literally about how many spells can you cram into a deck and then just bring Swords and Archers to make it even more broken. So here is where another problem comes in. The massive range increase that you can get from selecting an Archidon or Eclipser is ludicrous. When you select a Toxic Dead, you don't have a very far throwing range or shooting range. You have to get pretty close to cause any sort of problem for your opponent. But with an Archdown or Eclipser, you can't do that. Now, this was an absolute scummy freaking move. Using the use and control, abusing the use and control mechanics. Ace Player talked about this in a video. I properly garrisoned a miner to get a Castle Archer, yet he is able to still get extra shots on my economy by running up and down the map. This is something that you can do in Stick World Legacy to mess up your opponent. But you know what the difference is? In Stick World Legacy, you only face AI opponents. Stick World Legacy is single player. So sure, running up and down the map is a broken kind of strat, but it doesn't matter because it's a single player game. It's meant for fun. You abusing that in a multiplayer setting is so unbelievably disrespectful in my opinion. So, Let's look at my side. How much damage that my miners have taken here. It's ridiculous that he was able to do that. Now back to what I was saying before. Again, the humongous range increase that you can get with an arch on an Eclipser is insane. Look at that. That one shot almost made it to his base and vice versa. You, like, this is nearly, this is nearly, it's nearly half the map coverage when you select an Archon on a Eclipser with the range increase. That needs to get nerfed super hard. I feel like it should get nerfed almost to the same range as a Toxic Dead, where the projectile cannot travel very far. I feel like that's something that needs to happen because this, this just isn't, it's not okay in my opinion. It's blind shooting that comes down to luck, first of all, hoping that your opponent would just run into your projectiles or sometimes you get unlucky and you're not able to escape in time. Now I'm gonna pause right here because let's look at this. I have an archer, not an archer, I have, an, I have a wing and a ninja. What does he have? One, two, three, three archers right now. On paper, once again, who do you think would win this? A wing and a ninja or three archerdons? Pretty sure the three, uh, excuse me, pretty sure the wing and the ninja would win, right? Well, let me show you what happens when spells are a thing in this game. Uh, my ninja failed to attack there as well. For some reason, it wasn't working. Here we go. Projectile barrier, mass heal combo. I get the point of projectile barrier. It's supposed to be a bit of an emergency tank to where, hey, 
I don't have a tank right now. Let me use this so I can like stay in the game. Projectile barrier at this point is like a free impenetrable tank for ranged units to protect against ranged attacks that has an insanely short cooldown. Look at this. The projectile barrier is damn near done with its cooldown and it only costs 150 mana. This setup has allowed him to mass nothing but Archerdons right now. He already has eight of them. Now seven because I killed that one. He already has eight archers. Eight archers. And I attempted to come at him with a counter and it absolutely failed because of projectile barrier and mass heal. And that's another problem. Mass heal. I I have come to hate it. I don't like the idea of mass heal. One should have to either properly garrison or get a Merrick in order to heal units. The fact that you can use this right on the spot and heal light units all the way up to full because that's exactly what it does. That's exactly what mass heal does. Mass heal got nerfed before in an attempt to prevent it from being broken and it is still insanely broken. And there's the projectile barrier problem yet again. Like, <sighs> never mind about the projectile barrier. What I'm trying to say is this is super, super unbalanced. I have four different types of units that are way stronger than swords and archers together on paper. But the fact that he has three different spells that gives him the advantage. Projectile barrier having an insanely short cooldown. Snow Squall recently got buffed actually. So the fact that Snow Squall has been buffed, you now have an increased chance of freezing your opponent's enemies in place, or excuse me, freezing your opponent's units in place and rendering them all completely helpless for that short period of time. I also think that is unfair. Like, Snow Squall being buffed is, I, I've, I've had a problem with Snow Squall to begin with. And now it's like, it's, it's even worse. But anyway, again, just back to the mass heal. I'm super disappointed right now. So uh, I'm, I'm not being as efficient with my commentating as I like to be. But okay, let me talk about this. The Voltaic projectiles, it recently got buffed to where the damage over time lasts way longer than it should. It's at the point where it has, it outperforms blazing bolts because of how long the damage of over time lasts. It lasts insanely long, way too long. And you already have Blazing Bolts and the Toxic Upgrade, two different other methods of debuffs. And you can combine all this crap. You can combine the Toxic Upgrade, you can combine Blazing Bolts and Voltaic Projectiles. It's insane. And you have access to all of this at the beginning of the game. And Stick Empires, if you wanted to get Fire Arrows or Albatross Blazing Bolts, you had to get the golden mana necessary to research it. Now, Archidons and Blaze, and I can't talk right now. Archidons and Albatross, excuse me, are not meant to have Fire Arrow power in Stick Empires right off the bat. It should be no different in this game. You might as well say, that with the current state of Voltaic and, Voltaic and Blazing Bolts being available at the start of the game, you might as well rename the Archidon to the Fire Elemental, a weaker version of the Fire Elemental, weaker in terms of health. That's what this is. Archidons with Blazing Bolts slash Voltaic Projectiles at the start of a game are basically Fire Elementals at this point. So. I want to suggest a fix to that. This stuff needs to cost golden mana to use. It, it just does. Like, either that or lock these enchantments for the first, like, two minutes of the game or something. Because it's so unfair just having access to these debuffs as powerful as they are at the start of the game. You can mess up the slightest bit in an Archer v Archer start and you lose your archer and you lose the entire game. 
uh, same thing with these spells, how fast they recharge, how cheap they are, and how unbelievably broken they are. Watch this. The ultimate ridiculous combination of swords and archers with vampiric soul in three freaking spells. The spells is the main reason he's able to come out on top against me. Now I'm going to pause here because here is another problem that I seriously hope gets addressed. The Sword Wrath Jump Attack. In my honest opinion, the stun ability, that crap needs to get removed. Sword Wrath are only meant to be early to mid game units as a way to have a unit out that can do decent damage and be able to help defend against attacks and to help give you a small lead in a fight. They are not meant to be damn near mid to late game absolute powerhouses of destruction, but that is what they are. So my request or suggestion, I won't, I won't say request, it's more of a suggestion. I'm not trying to like tailor this to be around my desires because that's absolutely not true. But my suggestion, maybe like, actually this is somebody else's suggestion. Somebody else suggested this in the discord and I thought it was genius. Increase the jump attack damage to 15, but get rid of the stun. That would make the sword Rise jump attack a fancy way of dealing extra damage that you'll have a chance to dodge and you won't get completely obliterated by with, with this. Look at the current health of my toxic deaths. Watch this when all these sword Rise land their jump attacks. Look at that. I already lost a toxic dead and my other two toxic deads Wait, I think I lost two of them. Yeah, I, I lost two Toxic Deads, in fact. That was all due to the Sword Wrath. People have also suggested that the fact that they can do such bonus damage to heavy units is also absurd. I'm not really going to talk about that. But needless to say, a Sword Wrath using Control Whip, Control Whip can do 22 damage to a heavy unit. But these days, Control Whip has become irrelevant because... You know, it doesn't offer enough power now, the fact that it takes up an entire unit slot. Not saying that was a bad thing. I absolutely like the fact that Control Whip was nerfed and basically required to be researched. That was needed, don't change that. But that was just, you know, an FYI. But anyway, uh, I'm being forced to play defensive right now and it's not working out. Again, I have four different types of units. On paper, I would absolutely destroy swords and archers together. But the fact that he has three spells just shows that, again, you don't have to win by bringing different types of tiered units to use strategically to gain an advantage over your opponent. This has literally come down to how many spells can I bring to absolutely destroy my opponent? That's what this has come down to. And... Here, here's the game ender here. All these sword wrath rushing in with all these archidons. Using projectile barrier, you can use that instead of getting a tank like an like a spearton. Like projectile barrier, in my honest opinion, should be more of a defensive spell and not an offensive one. But that's what it is. Here's here here is here here. It, oh man, I'm getting mad just looking at this again. Vampiric Soul already being as ridiculous as it is. Then you combine that with Mass Heal. My units are being pushed so hard. They are past the castle gates, unable to do anything. A lot of his units are poisoned, but due to the Vampiric Soul and Mass Heal combo, we were unable to kill a single Sword Wrath. This has been a problem for much too long. So I am asking that please, please, please do something about this. Nerf Sword Wrath. Nerf using control Archidon range to where it is not damn near half the map coverage. Okay? And these spells, Projectile Barrier's cooldown is too short. Snow Squall, I get it was buffed because it was ineffective before. I feel like what should happen for that is, instead of completely freezing 
units in place and rendering them completely helpless and unable to do anything. A couple of ideas is to basically still allow them to kind of escape it. Like you know how giants have giants have the resistance to being slowed down. Giants can't be frozen. I'm honestly not against giving that ability to all units because again, being completely frozen and helpless and unable to do anything for that long amount of time is not fair to me. And then the biggest thing, mass heal, like I said, that really, really needs to get nerfed super freaking hard. It's not a big enough nerf that mass heal is currently at. Like, this causes proper... This, prop, this causes proper game strats to be destroyed by someone just with who spams spells and abuses the use of control mechanics and uses Sword Wrath and Archidons, which are completely broken. Right now, Sword Wrath dominate this game and I hate it. I hate it so much. But anyway, that's all for this video. I really, really, really hope something gets done about this because, oh my God, it is not fun. If it's not dealt with soon, players are going to get chased out of the game. They're going to get sick and tired of putting up with this and they're going to leave. And then not to mention Kaichu who still needs a nerf himself. I I'm not going to get into the whole nerf thing because this video could be like five hours. I'm not even joking, but yeah, I'll see you later.